Hello, I have arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, theoretical medical professional. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. Hello, hello. See us. So, tonight, Art Knights. Not a whole lot to be said other than that. You will be playing Art Knights, and yeah, nothing else really coming up. But yes, we will be doing another stream on this upcoming. Yeah, I think after some consideration, because I don't believe we're going to be, I don't believe this is going to be a collab week. I suppose I could double check that, but, but yes, I don't believe it is going to be so. Uh, so we're going to assume, we're going to assume that I will be playing on, playing again on Saturday instead, because I will not, uh, yeah, I will be out of town on Friday, and I figured it would just be logistically a lot easier for me if I didn't have to worry about being having to get set up for a stream while out of the house. Yes, there's a lot of other factors that I wouldn't want to have to control for, and a lot of additional things that I wouldn't want to have to do, <laughs> in short. But yes, it would just simply be easier and less hassle for me to just reschedule. So yes, so that being said, um, but yeah, 8.30 p.m. Central Time, you can expect the next stream. But yeah, I was a little bit worried. I was a little bit early, a little bit worried earlier. I was, ha I had an issue where I had dropped a lot of frames. We were dropping a lot of frames due to the network. But yeah, the actual program was running fine. I was doing a bandwidth test. Or rather, the, uh, the hardware was running fine. But yeah, there wasn't any issue with the rendering, just something was up with the network, such that I was losing 10% at first, then up to like 20%. I think it went up to 30% at one point, uh, very briefly though. Um, but yeah, it stayed around 20% lost frames for a while, and I figured, hmm, that's probably not a great environment to be streaming in. Maybe I should reschedule uh, today's stream. But... Uh, for whatever reason, it seems to have resolved itself, so it is what it is. But yes, one way or another, I am here, and I will continue to be here until such time as, I don't know, something goes wrong, I suppose, or until we're done. But yes, so 8.30 p.m. Central Time for this stream. Well, I don't need to tell you that. The stream has begun. If you're here, you're here. Anyway. And 8.30 p.m. Central Time for the next stream. So, all of that said, I think we should be pretty much clear, I suppose. So, let's not waste any time and get to video games. But yes, you may notice that there's a limited time drop. This is associated with the current ongoing event, which, as per tradition, we will be completely ignoring and never addressing. But yes, I would like to get to events someday, but again, we're very much behind on the story, even even beyond just being like three, three or four, three, I think, three streams behind due to slug issues. So yes, even barring all that, we're still a long ways behind what I would like to do, or what I would like to have done. And that is also why, part of the reason why there's not going to be an operator spotlight today. I was thinking about it. I have it ready. I've had it ready for weeks now, but, but yes, again, I want to prioritize story progress at this point. But yes, um, I want to prioritize story progress and just, I haven't had the opportunity to go over it again recently. So I don't want to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I don't want the uh, to be reading it as though it was my first time reading it, basically. Yes, it probably wouldn't be that bad, but again, just to be a little bit cautious. But yes, so uh, that should be uh, that. So uh, yeah, <laughs> let's get to the game that I said I was going to play. So yes, so we have Operation 4-9, Bad to the Bone. You can insert the riff there of your own accord if you would like. But yes. So, 
we're looking at a map with a lot of pain, it seems. I'm guessing we're going to get acquainted with these fire tiles whether we want to or not, because otherwise we probably aren't going to be able to deploy melee operators. But yes. Quite, uh, quite a limited quite a limited supply of spaces for ranged operators too. That'll be interesting to work around. Hmm. So yes. That looks to be, well, that could be a deployable space. Maybe. These definitely are. The fire tiles almost certainly are, but they're interspersed with non-deployable spaces. Again, I guess there's not too much I can really do before we actually get into the mission in terms of strategizing, unless I were to read ahead, which I don't necessarily intend to do if I can avoid it. Anyway, one thing that I am going to do preemptively is I'm going to switch out to one of our other medics, our other high level three star medic, uh, for a twofold reason. Onsel here. We haven't used Onsel very much. I think I might have back when we were trying to get Doberman or trying to use Doberman's talent as much as possible. So I used a lot of three stars. Um, but yeah, so we haven't used Onsel in a while. If oh, oh. Pardon, I am back. But yes, anyway, as I was saying. So yes, so we haven't used Onsol much, if at all. But yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say in differentiating him from Hibiscus, uh, other than the fact that he has a talent called Additional Healing, which gives him a chance to heal an additional ally. But yeah, I figured if we're going to be deploying pretty much all of our units onto tiles that are going to damage them significantly, it might be better to have the occasional even if it's just a random chance, unless it's not uh, it's not like a proc effect or anything like that. Something that, you know, goes off every few heals, like some such abilities are. Nor is he a multi-target medic who would be able to heal multiple allies every time he healed. I figured it'd still be good to have some of the slightly higher healing of a single target medic. Yeah, also there was a new outfit for him recently. Yes, Nighttime Cafe. Very nice look. Yes, I like the very dapper rabbits that he has alongside him as well. Maybe we'll do an Operator Spotlight for Ansel someday. But yes. Oop. Forgot about that. <laughs> oh well. The movie moment. Ready whenever. Say so yes. All of that being said, that's all I really care to do before we actually get into the mission, so let's get into the mission. <clears throat> Meteorite, what exactly did Jessica see? Were you with her? It's better if you don't find out. It has nothing to do with our combat operations, so don't worry about it right now. Hmm? Huh? How long are you going to keep hiding, Rhodes Island's insects? Mephisto, did he find us? Don't make any noises. Not yet. It's just another of his tricks. Uh, still don't feel like coming out? Don't think I didn't see your reinforcements coming. Well, whatever. I have something to show you. I'm sure you'll like it. Looking back now... We were originally planning to take over Chernabog from the very beginning. We waited for so, so long, and finally our time has come. The moment when we take our revenge against Ursus, against those who pers persecuted us infected. But what about the fellows in this sub-city? They ran away. They had pretty quick reactions, ran away before we had a chance to take action. Disconnected themselves and took off as quickly as they could. But where did they hope to escape to? 
Our comrades had long permeated every district, waiting for our opportunity. In the end, we caught up to them and gave them the punishment they deserved. These cowards, these perpetrators, what were we to do with them? It's simple. We would make an example of them. A proclamation that all injustices against the infected would be purged. Yes, that is the symbol of the reunion movement. Let them all turn into effigies of terror, one by one. You, set that nearby effigy on fire. Let there be light. Yes, sir. Come, light up this entire city. Let Rhodes Island see what happens to all of those cowardly oppressors. Don't. Alright, we're covering Amiya's eyes. Doctor? Don't look. Honestly, she's probably more prepared for this than we are. <laughs> Given that we woke up mm, a week ago, maybe. Burning hellscape of malevolence and madness. Doctor, let go of me. I'm fine. No, you must let me see it. One day, I must hold him accountable for his actions. Besides, I used to. Why? Why? Jessica, calm down. That... This is too atrocious. The smell of burning flesh. How long do you intend to keep hiding, my dear rabbit of Chernabog? I saw your little rabble sneaking around earlier, so I thought you might have been up to something. But it turns out you're just here to enjoy the show. How boring. Looks like you brought an entire party with you. Did you... did you do all this? Of course. Without using some terror tactics, how else were we supposed to minimize the losses? Make an example out of these 10%, and the other 90% fall into line. This, you see, can be considered the best way of saving lives. Doctor, I am not the same person I was back then, even though you might not remember. Yes, back then, I was timid, fragile, and easily scared. I couldn't move forward without you. I might even look the same way right now. But the difference is, I've seen more than enough tragedies. I don't want to see something like this happen ever again. But nothing will change unless I face reality. After all, I have to remind myself. I can't afford to retreat. I have to continue to fight on. And fight on we shall. So, how exactly are we going to swing this? So yeah, so it looks like... Looks like this right flank is the first one that's going to see action. I have placed Pon Cyrus too far back and now she's going to uh, be harmed considerably. Which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, it might be be it might be best if I hold off so oh dear mm, I'm just <laughs> I'm just now seeing the uh, amount of damage Pon Cyrus has taken right it doesn't seem that bad now but probably a lot of that has to do with the fact that these hounds are not too terribly concerning and yeah she's now getting some healing yeah, they probably didn't do, like, all that much damage to her all that quickly. But yes, it looks like most of what's going on is going on here, roughly. Um, do we want Jessica or do we want Meteorite? We want something sooner, I think. Yeah, I think I waited a bit too long. Yeah, there's nothing I can really do about that. But that's why we practice. But yes, um, yeah, I've definitely waited too long. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to lose the mission right here. 
Oh, no, never mind. Alright, so. All that being established. Yeah, Ponsiris probably isn't going to see that much activity. But things are going to start heating up on the other side. So. Who better to take the heat than Fire Whistle? Um... Alright, and now we're going to get some... Yeah, we're going to get some deployment points. And we're going to see how this all treats us. So yeah, not great so far. But, we are doing okay. But yeah, really, the only issue is that I didn't deploy a defender to assist Ponsiris sooner. But yeah, the... You, the fire tiles don't seem to be doing that much damage, to be honest. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see precisely how much damage, say, Ponsiris is taking. But yes. Ah! Oh dear. Right. The, uh, I forgot about the Sarkaz casters. Um... So, we're about to lose our other medic, and that means that our left side is, uh, not going to survive, I think. Um, so yes, what would have solved that? I think probably, so yes, I think we might as well retreat at this point, but I think we, we've got a strategy for next time. So, probably what we would want is because the arc the caster spawns here it's important that we have a unit yeah because they were there you know the closest unit was onsol so it would be best i think if we placed onsol back here around where the p is facing him upwards thus allowing us to cover these areas with him and have a unit closer to the caster to draw their ire But yeah, it might be possible for, uh, I can't click on her while the game is paused, apparently. Part of me, I don't know. Intuitively, it feels like units should take less damage from the tiles if they have more defense, but I don't really have any reason to believe that's true, necessarily. But yes. Anyway, so another issue was, uh, simply the fact that that uh, Meteorite had no healing backup. Yeah, Perfumer doesn't have enough range to be able to affect her. Yeah, so no healing backup on Meteorite. So we would have to place probably a unit here. A unit here if we wanted to be able to defend her. But then that leaves us in the same position where we, you know, aren't able to actually... Yeah, we aren't able to heal her if she's here, unless I guess we could place Onsol facing this way or so. Which could be fine. After all, Pons Pon Cyrus is very strong, as we've established. But then again, we don't necessarily need to be using Meteorite there anyway. We could always use her somewhere else. So again, if we want to make use of this tile at all, it might be best if we... or it would almost certainly be best, really if we placed someone up here. Because, yeah, something to draw the ire of the Sarkaz caster. Yes, once they... Mmm, slugs. My favorite. Alright, um... I just had a thought. We've sustained injuries. I need to get the wounded to the rear. Alright. Cover me. So, yeah, so another thing we might want to do here... Was that... No, I was going to say, was that a proper attempt? I guess we can make one. Because yes, it does cost sanity to make and fail attempts at stages. But it doesn't cost that much. I think you actually, you get a pretty significant amount back when you retreat. But yes, I'm going to the movie up real quick before we do anything else. And we're going to bring out a specialist. And by a specialist, I mean literally a specialist. But yes. So yeah, so Snow Sand here 
has a twofold usefulness. Threefold, I suppose you could say. But yes, so Snow Sand has uh, some stats on her, like she's expected to take damage, because she is. But yes, so Snow Sand can take a little bit of heat, literally or figuratively. Though I guess she doesn't have any, any resistance, so maybe that doesn't matter so much. In fact, probably she has less health than Onsol. No, actually, slightly more. Hmm, anyway. Not a whole lot more, but enough to keep her keep her around a little bit longer, I suppose. Anyway, the main reason I was thinking about using Snow Sand is the slugs. Whenever I see the slugs, I think Snow Sand. Though, you know, we didn't use her last time around because they were simply too numerous, I think, to have Snow Sand be a practical answer to them. But yes, anyway, in this specific case, the specific reason that I want to use Snow Sand in addition to the slugs is the fact that she can hold enemies in place for an extended period of time with telescoping its electric net. So yeah, so positioning her on that tile and then facing her upwards will allow her to capture and silence the enemy. Of course, that's contingent on the caster dying before she, uh, yeah, dying before she does. So probably in, with that in mind, with that in mind, it's almost certainly best if we place Onsel here facing right, because otherwise we're not going to have a whole lot of healing coverage. I wanted to sort of drag enemies onto this tile, this heated path, ideally. Yeah, hold them in place there for a little bit so they take a little bit of damage. Hey, real quick, it occurs to me that I have not seen the duration of the silence. Right, it's not part of the skill, it's part of her talent. So it is... Okay, there's silence for a good long time. Eight seconds. Yes, just to be clear that it is not eight plus four seconds. It is eight seconds with a... Which includes a plus four bonus. So without that bonus, it would be a... a uh, without that bonus, it would be four seconds. But yes, so Snow Sant is an answer to slugs in basically every circumstance, but in this particular one, I think she's especially useful. But yeah, more specifically, I feel that she is even more useful than simply having the slugs uh, be killed before they can reach our units. But yes, other than that... Yeah, other than that, there weren't really any big errors that I noticed, other than just, you know, I wasn't being... I wasn't quite quick enough on the draw, so to speak. But yes, it takes a good long while before enemies start appearing on the left-hand side. So, honestly, I do kind of want to deploy Myrtle, though that would ne necessitate... I guess we can place Myrtle here, actually. That might be best, actually. Of course... Hmm. Okay, so she did take a uh, significant... Ooh, that's... Yeah, that's quite a bit of damage. Hmm. Okay, so that refunds... Okay, right, because it's the first try. But yes, your first real attempt at a stage does give you more sanity back Please than go. others. So yes, so we did lose some DP there due to... Uh, a slight mistake on my part. Um, I guess we could also book enemies here. Hmm, that might be better actually, because that would leave. Well, that would that would leave her as the prime target for the northern caster here, who needs to be needs to be killed urgently. Hmm. Actually, if we were to place, say, Jessica thusly, would she? Yes, she would have coverage. Okay. Right. So yeah, we did have a little bit of... Don't... Uh... Alright. But yeah, so I was gonna say, we did have a bit of issue with... Uh... Did I... Wait, why is... Was Jessica attacking there? You couldn't have been, by all rights. 
odd. Where was I? Somewhere. Um, but yes, anyway, we had problems with DP, I think is what I was trying to say. Hmm. And now we're still having problems. Okay, we're having fewer problems now. Um, I'm still worried. Uh, okay, we're not seeing a caster yet, though. Okay, I do need to... Right, okay. <laughs> This should work. I hope this works. Um, hmm, that's not so great. Um, but I guess she doesn't need to be there. That's fine. Um, I don't like anything that I'm seeing right now, but uh, we're living, so it could be worse. Um, we might want to hold off on deploying snow sand, honestly. But yes, I'm not liking just sort of generally what I'm seeing here, but it's not awful, I suppose. Um, yeah, especially not now that we have the artillery. Mm. Well, okay. Well, we've lost, uh, we've let a dog through, which is a little bit unfortunate. Okay, here come the casters who are going to cause issues for Gummy. And that's going to cause issues for everyone else in turn. Especially Estesia, because Estesia uh, can't live. Um, which is unfortunate for her, but, you know, what can you do? Um, Gummy! Right, okay, so our... Hmm. Okay, okay, how is this uh, going to shake out? Okay, Gummy's fine. Gummy's fine, and so I think the right-hand side is going to be fine. We should retreat Astesia before she dies, because that will be a waste of DP. Perfumer is doing okay. Okay, slugs. I was a little bit careless, and I let the slugs uh, appear. That's pretty much... That's really the bulk of the issue, but... Um, oh dear, who... Oh, Ponsiris! Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Um... Hmm. So we are falling apart a little bit. Hmm. Okay. So. Our strategy has fallen apart. And I was a little bit too preoccupied with placing, uh... Yeah. Placing, uh... My units to, uh... Be able to determine why. Um... Okay, so we need to deal with two waves of casters. Ideally, we need to be able to kill them faster. I'll hold up the, rear. the slugs stay put for a good long while, so we could reasonably kill them before they get into especially deadly range of my operators. So, this is a tricky situation to be sure. Hmm. Yes. Does this give me any more information about the casters? Yeah, it just says that they use complex arts to attack. So yes. Or actually, it does say that they use chains to paralyze operators. I don't know if that disables, like, effects, necessarily. Because I was briefly considering putting Ponsiris here for her incredible durability. Um, but... Thinking about that, I'm not 100% sure if that would be the best. Because if the, yeah, if the chains remove her, like, status, that would be very bad. So I suppose I don't necessarily have any reason to believe that they would. That's just speculation on my part. But yes, the left-hand side also started falling apart pretty quickly there. I think... The issue, in large part, is just the fact that I don't think Perfumer really has necessarily that much healing in her. Again, well, let's try that. <laughs> let's not uh, back all the way out. But yeah, so Perfumer doesn't... I don't think she has that much healing in her is the issue. I guess she's certainly not weak. You know, she's Elite 1, level 60, which is probably... This is, like, really high, actually, for our units. Um, 
But yeah, for those who aren't survivors of the Monster Hunter incident, uh, she's doing, she's pretty good, actually, to be honest. Um, hmm. Perfumer's good. I think we really can't go wrong. Well, we could go wrong, but I don't think Perfumer is the issue, basically. Um... But yes, if we were to place Perfumer here, she would be able to cover all of these tiles here. And getting a tile, getting an operator here to, you know, remove the threat of the casters quickly would be nice. I'd also... well, okay. I think there's not a whole lot we can do here to really speed up the process of death up here. Other than, say, placing, you know, placing an artilleryman here, as we were. Though, even so, Fire Whistle doesn't have that much coverage of there. So she might not be the best choice. But yeah, I'm, I'm thinking if we just care about damage and don't care about blocking units, it might, well, no, because we will need to block once, uh, we will need to block for when our unit up here gets, uh, chained. But yes. So, let's think this through a little bit. Aesthesia is probably our best unit in terms of, well, our best unit on the team. Maybe not overall. But yes. Aesthesia has 10 resistance, which is not amazing, and I suppose not unmatched either. Mm, the more I see, the, the less impressed I am. Um, she is fairly tough, though. She's tougher than Frostleaf, if only by a little bit. But yes, yeah, she does... She does better damage, and she does have more blocking potential. But being able to block more units isn't always a good thing. Because, you know, melee units don't attack you unless you're blocking them. So, at certain points, having more blocking, or blocking more units, basically just means that you that you are taking more damage. So, that might not be for the best. But yeah, so Asthesia has resistance, but she doesn't have that much more resistance. Um, whoops. Let's see another option. Um, no. Yeah, I was looking at Shaw because I know that her talent gives her a passive resistance increase, but it's only 7. I can sort operators by stats. So, okay, yeah, as far as as far as operators I have go, uh yeah, it looks like 15 is about the best on resistance I can get, which is not really all that surprising to be honest. Yeah, resistance is generally not a stat had in any great quantity. Most of our units that have good resistance don't have good health. Um, but yeah, most of our units that have good resistance don't have good health, so they probably don't want to be chained, even though they would take somewhat less damage from it than other units. But yes, we do have some... We do have some uh, defenders and whatnot who have some decent health on them. Hmm. But I don't know if we've got any great choices for there. Yeah, Asthesia and Fire Whistle might still be the go-to for the left-hand side. Deploying... No, we deploying Myrtle too early there killed her, so we don't want to do that. Anything, yeah, we don't want to deploy more than one unit there until we can heal them. Um, yeah, the right-hand side still needs someone to do something, but I'm not entirely sure what I want that something to be. So yeah, Snow Sant died there very quickly. And yeah, I don't know if she really has the damage output on her own to be of a tremendous use. Yeah, if we were to... I was thinking about placing a unit onto that fire tile specifically, but if we do that, I think she's just going to... Or I don't think... Yeah, I don't know that Snow Sant is going to be able to... 
pull the enemies onto that tile. Actually, no, they should. They should be able to. Yeah, they can overlap with operators. I don't know why I would think that they wouldn't. Um, anyway. So, Snow Sand is probably still an okay choice. Myrtle may not be the best for this specific mission. Um, Jessica covering Astizia or Frostleaf on the left-hand side would be fine. In addition to some support from Fire Whistle, I think. Because, yeah, again, the main reason that we want Fire Whistle is for the damage. And since we really just want her doing more damage with her attacks, I think Wildfire would probably be better than Scorched Earth. Fire simply because it's going to trigger more often. Yeah, we don't need to be super selective because I don't think we have any waves that are going to be like a huge issue. <clears throat> Which is the main reason that you would want a, you know, you would want a buff skill, a skill that grants you some sort of bonus over a period of time versus one that just is active. So yes. So, if we really want durability, then we could also go with, I was going to say a duelist defender, but I think we've only got one who's anywhere near respectable levels for this uh, mission. So, and that would, of course, be Shaw. So Shaw's fine. Um, I think it's probably best if we play the mission a little bit more, collect some more data, rather than just theory crafting. Operation commencing. But yes, it might be better to place Pon Cyrus a little bit more forward. Enemy status confirmed. At the very least, putting her in front of Myrtle. Myrtle has... Okay defense. I guess she doesn't have that much lower defense compared to on Cyrus, but she definitely has lower uh Okay, she has higher attack actually. I was completely wrong about that. Anyway. Uh okay. So yes, so basically everything that I was going to say there uh was false. But Now it's not. But yes, now she has significantly more defense and more attack. Of course, that's temporary for now. Yeah, I guess the issue, again, the issue with Myrtle wasn't that she was physically present there. The issue was just that uh, she died. But yeah, the issue was that she took a lot of damage. But yeah, she took a whole lot of damage. Just the timing was the problem, really. But yes, we will get some more DP. Um, this might not have been the best timing. Because, yeah, now that dog's gonna... Ah, no. That dog is not going to get past us. Okay. Well. Alright. So. Okay. So now we've messed things up a little bit. Mm. Mm. This is... I was going to say fine. It's not. It's very much not. But we're going to make it work. So, um, we're going to go with Frostleaf first. I don't know if that's a good choice, but it's the choice that I'm going to make. Um, I don't... Honestly, I just don't feel like we really have the healing to be able to sustain Frostleaf effectively there. Um, and yeah, she's going to go down. Now the real threat is if we don't play this very smart. If we don't play this really smart, then we're going to see Perfumer be the one to get chained. And if she goes down, everyone goes down. So yes. Honestly, Pon Cyrus being in front is probably okay. She's got more defense and more attack. Um, she might also have more max health. Oh, mm, all right. I didn't think things through again. Um, okay. So, our medic is down. And uh, we're kind of out of options. Um, didn't think about 
uh, <laughs> didn't think about all of the potential implications of everything that was going on there, so that's on me. Um, and yeah, we have lost. I'm confident now. Okay. Only one sanity will be consumed, so that's the not too bad. Demolished. Enemy pursuit vehicles intercepted. I don't think we really need to worry about the conditions of the roads, given what we've seen so far. Um, okay. So, I don't think that Perfumer has the healing that we need at this particular moment in time. So yes, again, part of the issue there, well, okay, the issue is twofold. One, the issue was that, yeah. How do we want to swing this? Okay. So we need someone who can take the arts attacks. Ponsiris, despite everything, is not that person. But yeah, even with her health and even with, you know, all that she all else that she has going for her, she still died very quickly. But yeah. Part of the issue may just have been that Ansel wasn't able to consistently heal both her and uh yeah, both her and then Gummy. But Gummy also, you know, had healing. So I don't know how much more I could do for her. But yeah, the best solution that I can think of is maybe using two rapid redeploy operators to sort of bait the casters. But yeah, that way we can have, yeah. Though again, that would, then it becomes a timing game. And I like timing games, but I don't like playing two timing games simultaneously where losing one of them means I lose the whole mission. So, rather than that, it might be best if we play this in such a way where, because I, I don't know. It's hard for me to play around arts damage because, you know, you can't like, you can't be that good against it. You can't reduce it that much. Most operators don't have tremendous resistance. Though, now that I think about it, we do have another option. But yes. Um, but yes, we do have another option, one whom we've seen a little bit before. And that would be... Beeswax. But yes, so, Beeswax is a particular type of caster, uh, known as a Phalanx caster. Forgot the name there for a second. So yes, so while she is, while her skill is not active, she has significantly increased defense and resistance, which is not factored into her base stats here. She has very high, you know, health as well. Very, you know, part of that is just from her high level, but, but yes, anyway. So because her skill, we could, we could make her skill not be active. It would, it would, uh, yes, we could make her skill not be active during that time. But yes, what do we want to do though? Because if it activates, well, I guess this is a chance to test my theory on whether the Sarcas casters like deactivate skills. Again, there's no real reason to believe that they would, given that the game doesn't say anything about that, but I don't know. Call it intuition. Um, so yeah, anyway, one way or another, whoops. Let's try that again. One way or another. Oh wait, no, she's already on the squad, right. So yes, Beeswax is probably our best choice in terms of just straight up resisting arch damage with her say here then that means pardon that means that we would not not be able to place anyone further than here but that's probably fine because yeah that would then mean that we could probably use get away with another uh single or single target medic though again the issue yeah, the issue with using single target medics at all, though, is the fact that we're going to be needing healing on multiple units, like 
we can't just rely on the front line and then if a few enemies leak by, you know, patch up whoever's in the rear and then turn our attention back to the front. We're going to need to be able to heal a lot of different units just sort of on a whim. So it might be best, rather than using, say, Frostleaf, it might be best to use another healing defender. I don't think that's a great option overall, because I don't want to lose out on the DPS. But, in theory, Beeswax should, well, again... It's kind of tricky. <laughs> because Beeswax is very resistant. And she can, or she's resistant by default, 15 is very high, and she's even more resistant when her skill's not active. But, I don't know, I don't know if we can really rely on her that well for what we're doing here. I guess, you know, might as well be decisive. We can think about things while we're in the mission. Mm. I'll do my best to take care I'm not so great at thinking about things while we're in the mission, to be honest, but... Ready. Prepare for battle. Yes, one way or another, this still might not be the best place for Fawn Cyrus, because that means we're going to need to place another unit even more aggressively if we want her to not get chained, and her getting chained is lethal. We have already seen that. Please hold on. So, with that in mind... Who else would be good here? Snow Sant is like no no more likely to survive is the problem. Snow Sant is no more likely to survive and perhaps is even less likely to survive. I was going to switch out to a I was going to switch out to a single target medic there, I think. That was an idea in my head at one point. Oh, hold on. One thing I just realized is that if we're not placing, if we're not playing that aggressively, we can actually deploy units like this. And this makes things a lot. Mm, we've already seen this before. I, uh, <laughs> all right. I think I used the skill a little bit sooner than we did last time. But I guess, yeah, Myrtle did still catch the Hound last time, so it's not a huge, huge deal. Well. Um. Okay. So. Things are not looking great for us. In fact, they're looking quite bad. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> okay. Sustained injuries. I so need yes. To get the wounded to the rear. So, cover me. I think Myrtle's not the best choice for this. I think maybe we want to use uh, not Myrtle, because every time we've used Myrtle, it's not turned out well for us. So, I'll do my with best that in mind, on Cyrus, and then Don't the worry. space you ahead of me. her, we will place Gummy when she becomes available. So yes, given circumstances, I'm going to take a chance on Perfumer. Perfumer doesn't have, doesn't heal quite as quickly as other medics. So, Gummy doesn't have great damage, but she has okay damage. I want things here to die quickly. But I don't... Yeah, I suppose I don't need to worry about it that much. So... We got... I guess we don't need to deploy beeswax... Quickly. Um... But yeah. With how things are... Unless, again, we are to use a rapid redeploy operator, and that's still an option. We would need to... Please hold on. Yeah, we need to play... Okay, okay. Um, we need to start deploying on the other side before too long. How do... Well, no. 
we can't place Fire Whistle here because, ooh, this is actually uh, not great now that I think about it. Um, oh! You know, I hadn't thought about that actually, but that was a great idea. Well, okay, that would have been a great idea if I'd had it earlier. Um, as it stands, it is merely an okay idea. This might also be a good idea, actually. Alright, so maybe it would have been good to deploy beeswax. Mm, okay, I'm I'm confident that this is this is the wave. Um, and since I'm pretty sure that this is the wave, uh, we're gonna go kinda hard. So beeswax now has 35 defense, so she's going to take a full a little over a third less damage from arts. Yes. So, Frostleaf is not the play here, it seems like. Hmm. So yeah, this isn't the wave. So we can start clearing enemies out without too much trouble, I think. And we're going to need to do that, I think, if we want Frostleaf to have any chance of surviving. So Frostleaf really doesn't have, really do, isn't it, I don't think. Um, these casters have a lot of range on them. But our plan did work. So yeah, they don't take that much damage. This is now a situation where we would want to use Frostleaf skill, I think. Um, okay. So I think we're pretty okay. We want these fellows dead. Um, so using Beeswax's skill now, it should be not so great. Um, I don't want to deploy Meteorite until... I want her to kill those slugs. But I don't want to deploy her until we are yeah, engaging the caster in melee. So I guess, yeah, they're close enough that it's probably fine. Um, the left side is really not getting the healing that they, uh, are you? Oh, right, because you, yes, because you target enemies, hmm. Forgot about enemy targeting priorities. Um, hopefully this won't be too bad. So Onsol is, okay, yeah, we've lost our right hand. Um... Beeswax is doing okay, but we have lost uh, the match. That looks like it's the last wave. Did the... Hmm. I am curious, though. Did the casters... Hmm. <laughs> okay. It's too bad we didn't win, but I won't let it discourage me. Neither shall I. So, let's spend some more time thinking about what just happened. So yeah, this time I will think without playing the mission. So, towards the end there, yeah, we were getting... Hmm, I am losing some frames now, a worrying amount, but not a overwhelming amount. Um... <clears throat> hmm. The number is steadily climbing, so if it continues to do so, we might have a problem. Okay, so once the casters appear, once the casters appear, then that becomes a problem. But yeah, we can distract one with, <clears throat> yeah, we can distract one with beeswax, no issue. And the others we can probably deal with just fine with, uh, yeah, the others we can probably deal with just fine with, uh, well, okay. So Gummy did die there. That was a part of the problem. But yeah, Ponsiris, for all of her incredible virtue, is not that good at, uh, destroying our enemies. But yeah, she's more about building herself up than she is about tearing others down, which is an admirable quality. But yes. So, that being said, it is not the quality that we need in this moment. So. 
We need a little bit more damage, I think. Just a little bit more damage in general. I was playing very safe there, and that might not have been the play. So on the left-hand side, we were very close to losing Frostleaf very frequently there. So Frostleaf has okay durability. I don't know that her defense has anything to do with the fire. Just going to put this up while I look. Aesthesia is more durable, more health, more defense, and of course, the same amount of resistance. I was going to say more, but that is not accurate. Another option, another possibility would be, yeah, an operator that we haven't used in a while, or at least a similar strategy. We could make use of, say, Quartz, who, despite her very slow attack speed, has a thoroughly incredible amount of hit points. But yeah, her having a lot of HP would make her naturally somewhat resistant even as she does even as she has no resistance and no defense. So, with that in mind, I don't know I don't know that Quartz is great at this. I've heard that Quartz isn't very good in general, or more so that her uh yeah, her particular subclass is not very good. It occurs to me. It occurs to me that I don't know where my water bottle is. There it is. <laughs> it occurs to me that I haven't filled my water bottle. Let me go fix that. Be right back. Thank you for your patience. I have returned. So yes. So anyway. So the benefits of using quartz are pretty significant in this case, I think. Hope I can help. I hope so too. But yes, weighing in at a whopping 3,276, Quartz has more health than basically any two other operators on our squad put together. So, given that she has twice as much health to play with, she basically has 50% arch resistance. Of course, uh, physical damage will shred her, but, you know, we're not that worried about physical damage, to be honest. So yes. So she should be able to deal with arch damage pretty okay. She shouldn't suffer too much from it. Beeswax is able to endure on the other side as well, I think, without too much hassle. So yes. So now the question is, do I want to double down on multi-target healing or do I want to eliminate it? Because I feel like those are the two big changes that we could make at this point. I think with Quartz, we might also be able to get away with not using Artillery. Because Quartz has good damage on her. She doesn't attack frequently. She's quite slow at attacking, but she's going to do a lot of damage per attack. So that might, that might remove the need for Fire Whistle to be aiming to the right as she was. Likewise with, uh, yeah, likewise with Firewatch, or no, hold on, Frostleaf. Getting all these, these names confused, oh dear. I suppose, again, we might as well just start testing our theories rather than just thinking about them. But yes, we're kind of moving away from... Kind of moving away from the idea of using uh of using snow sand again but it is what it is but yes again with her incredible amount of health she can quartz that is she can endure the presence of the slugs to a basically unmatched degree a bit late, not, a big problem. not a big problem indeed so yeah, that was, in fact, pretty good there. She seemed to have taken a very small amount of damage from the heated path, which eliminates another concern that I had in mind, that it was potentially... that the damage was potentially based on a percentage of the unit's health. Please hold on. 
of course, with the amount of damage that Quartz is going to be taking with her lack of defense, we are going to want more healing on her to keep her up. Yes. Uh, oh, nope. No promotions. Sorry. But yes. Anyway. All right, Quartz is fine. Um, I only want to strike the enemy. So, um, I suppose we might as well deploy Beeswax sooner rather than later. All right, defense. Artilleryman in position. Ah, right, right, right. Do we? Where? Oh, hold on. Uh, Frostleaf's gone. Um, uh, hmm, I didn't plan on that. Uh, what have I done? Hmm. Well, Snow Sand, good. <laughs> Thanks for showing up. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I was a little bit careless there, it seems like. Um, oh no. Hmm, okay. Oh yeah, now we're seeing the weakness of Quartz. Hmm. And um <laughs> Okay, I think we I think we've kinda lost, so I think we're just gonna retreat once again. Retreat! Back to the stronghold and regroup. Okay. So, quartz is not the solution. So again, that leaves me with more questions than answers. So, Gummy is a choice. Maybe a good choice, maybe not, who knows. But the, yeah, what it comes down to is that with Quartz, we don't have enough healing to get her up once, the, once she starts taking physical damage. So what else can we do with that? I suppose there are other types of guards that also have high HP. Guards in general have pretty decent HP, but what can we do to get really good HP? I suppose part of the problem is just the fact that we don't have a lot of... Uh, with my historical lack of emphasis on guards, we don't have a lot of great ones. Of course, I do have a pretty good guard. Um, but yes, a strategy that I've been avoiding deliberately for a while now. And we do have some other guards who maybe could be good, maybe not. Um... Because, yeah, a big part of the issue is, again, just the fact that we don't have the defense on the right-hand side. Or we don't have the damage on the right-hand side. Because we're getting too many enemies, I think, is a big part of the issue. Things just aren't dying fast enough. Which, again, says guard to me. That says we need a guard. But, yeah, because we need blocking and we need damage, so we need a guard. Because we don't need that much blocking that we would need another defender, I think. But again, that leaves me with a lot of questions and not a lot of answers. Well, I suppose one option that we could go with... But yes, Matoi Maru, but yes, is another guard whom I haven't used a whole lot, but one that I'm reasonably fond of. But yeah, I like her character a little bit. But yeah, she's unpromoted as of this point, so... I'm a little bit reluctant to promote her just for the sake of this mission, so I might have to give it a little bit more thought. But I suppose, again, I want to not, like, be stuck here forever, so... Again, I might have to break with tradition somewhat. Okay, so let's take it from the top. 
So right hand side, our issue is once we get the caster chaining up our unit here, they're kind of done for. But yeah, they're done for, and we don't have, you know, enough defense here from just Pon Cyrus to be able to hold back the tide. But yeah, so Pon Cyrus doesn't have enough block to hold back enough enemies to cover that area, nor do she and whoever we've placed here so far have enough damage to take out enemies fast enough to make the caster not be a problem. Of course, that is if we continue to work with the same strategy that we've been using. If we were to instead deploy Pon Cyrus perhaps here, or someone else maybe, I don't know, uh, if we were to do things differently, we could maybe place Pon Cyrus here, place someone else here, uh, Onsol facing this way, and someone else facing this way, another a sniper ranged unit of some sort, probably a sniper, like I said. So yes, the important part of placing them here is that and with our sort of frontline defense here. So again, this is not without issues because having our, no, that was, mm, hmm, no. Um, I was entertaining for a moment the idea of perhaps using, uh, oh dear, Totafons, that's her name, but I don't think that Tadathons is going to fit. Because yeah, my main thought was I want to only be targeting these squares, because if this square gets targeted, then that means the caster is not getting targeted. So that's bad, because we want that caster dead. Of course, there are ways around that, but nothing that I think would be great. So, one, okay, I was going to say one issue with this problem is that if we place Onsol here, for instance, he's going to get targeted by this caster, but we could easily solve that problem by placing Onsol here and keeping Beeswax or someone else here. But yes, another thing that we could do, okay, um, hmm. so Onsol here covering these two spaces with another unit, that is four units out of the eight we're allowed to deploy, I think. But yeah, that's about half our force here. If we have Ansel, On Cyrus, someone, and oh dear, what is Okay, hold on. What have I done? Yes, I have not had that happen before. But then again, I guess I've never right clicked on the window before. Um uh all right, technical difficulties. I guess I'm gonna have to close that and reopen. Are we good? Okay, we're good. I can't actually see the, uh, <laughs> I can't actually see the additional uh, screen that I have with the game on it again. So uh, when things go wrong with it, it's not always immediately obvious if I'm not looking directly at the preview here. Okay. So anyway, so half our squad gets tied up in the right-hand side, leaving half our squad to defend the left-hand side. The issue on the left-hand side has been historically that they uh, die. So that's not so good. But yeah, usually, you know, Frostleaf or whoever else we put in first dies. Um, and then things just kind of start falling apart from there. Having Beeswax take the aggro from the caster is good, I think. Yeah, that is, continues to be a good idea, I do believe. Sit. So. We need a little bit more resilience on the left-hand side. I think that might honestly be... Okay. So. Here's what we're going to do. I think B or Matoi Maru, Matoi Maru is going to be the best choice for the left-hand side. I was considering her for the right-hand side with her high health and all that. But, mm, I don't know. I think left is what we're going to go with for her. This is... 
All right. I don't like to, again, I don't want to promote my units too, too readily. Will that be a benefit to us, demonic power? Hmm. No, we just uh, saw what no defense does to us, and I don't like it. Granted, she doesn't have high defense anyway, but I would prefer more healing. What do we need to do to unlock the talent? Um, Elite 2, which will not happen today. But yes, regeneration beta will help, as well as it will help with the yeah perfumer not being able to heal that much. So we don't need to worry about Matoi Maru as much. Fire Whistle is probably still fine, if maybe not great. Because, yeah, part of the issue is just that we're not able to... Well, again, with Beeswax, whether or not we can damage the caster is kind of not a huge deal immediately. We want the caster to die very quickly on the right-hand side. But we don't really care so much about whether they die quickly on the left-hand side. Because, yeah, again, beeswax is sort of my plan for how to deal with that. So this is a Request concentration point. But, yes, I think we're going to use Onslaught quickly here. We will need more backup for Han Cyrus before too long. Gummy is probably not our best play here, but she's an okay choice. The more I think about it, the more I don't like this plan, but it's kind of all I've got, so we're just gonna be decisive. Is this a good strategy? Maybe. We'll find out. But for right now, it's the strategy, so it's going to be what we use. So yes, being able to deal multi-target damage is good. Yeah, again, part of the issue might just be that we're, we are under level. And this issue is only exacerbated by the fact that we uh, don't have... <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Um... But yes, anyway, I was going to say, this issue is only exacerbated by the fact that we don't have, um... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting nervous and now I'm rambling. So you'll have to pardon me. We are having an issue in that Matoi Maru is not surviving that well. The right side is doing okay. I'm still not that confident in Meteorite, necessarily. This is a bad time to use the skill. We would want to wait until there's more enemies. Ah, it would be a really bad time to use the skill because uh, if we use the skill now, then yeah, uh, we would have been taking a lot more damage. We can't activate the skill, so it might actually, it might genuinely be disabled. Interesting. So yes, a little bit of healing for you. All right, we now have the enemy casters and not an issue. So let's just start killing. Gummy being able to heal more easily is good. I don't like what's going on here in general, but the caster should be a bit less of an issue now, maybe, hopefully. Um, Yeah, part of the issue that we're having is just that Fire Whistle doesn't... We don't have a great place to put Fire Whistle. Alright, we've now lost our right-hand defense. Um, so, as soon as we see another caster, we're going to deploy Myrtle. I don't expect Myrtle to mm, survive. And, uh, okay, things have fallen apart. So... 
I think we're going to make this. I think we are going to live this. I think we've won. Okay. Okay. Pawn Cyrus has pulled through, as always, because she's our specialist girl and we love her so much. Anyway, Jessica uh, has perished, despite the fact that she is also very special to us and we love her too. Matoi Maru is fine. But yes, she is the beast that cannot be killed. Um, okay, we're good, I guess. <laughs> a little bit scuffed, but uh, a three-star victory is a three-star victory, I suppose. I can't complain. But yes, um, yeah. Uh, what went wrong there? So, the issue was, at least part of it, uh, let's get... Let's get Snow Sant out of here. We don't need her to block at this point. We don't need any damage from her. Not that she was doing any in the first place. Okay. So. Yeah, at some point Gummy went down. And I wasn't paying enough attention to know precisely why. <clears throat> Frostleaf, watch out. Don't rush so far forward. I know what I'm doing. Ah! Ah! She sliced through the shield using a blade of frigid air? What? Get lost. Sit. Amia, Frostleaf has broken the enemy's formation and is now charging towards their commander. Snipers, casters, I need you to cover Frostleaf. Oh? And just what do you want, little fox? I want you to scream and beg. I want you to pay. With your life. Out of my way. Whoa. The black arts. Uh, hurry, run for it. I don't want to end up like Mephisto's minions. Mephisto, we're not letting you get away. Huh. I should have guessed that these goons weren't enough to stop you. You're going to pay for what you've done. You can't escape. <laughs> Little fox, you're getting a bit too close for comfort. Because I am the one who will take your life. Those who do not respect the sanctity of life do not deserve one of their own. Huh? <laughs> Is that so? Huh? My feet? Amia, reunion forces are appearing from all directions, even though there, isn't, there aren't a lot of them. Oh no. It's the Yeti Squadron. They've all come together. Alright, I need to introduce you to a new friend. <laughs> Ahem. Next up, put your hands together for the real star of the show. The Nightmare of the Northwest Tundra, Master of the Yetis. Miss Ross Nova! She will freeze every bit of your flesh... Every drop of your blood, bit by bit. We need to get out of here. Mephisto, I should have left you to slowly freeze to death in the tundra like the psychopath you are. Oh my. Scary, scary. But Rhodes Island is right in front of us. Very effectively deflecting. <laughs> deflecting there. Rossleaf, back up. Amia, take them with you. I refuse. That person. That person is. She's coming towards me. We can't win. <sighs> Even though I would have liked to live a bit longer. I'm glad that I had the chance to meet all of you. Hurry. Rossleaf? Hurry! Don't worry, Rhodes Island. I'll give you a painless death. So 
glad you're back, Doctor. Now we can walk this path together. Me with you, and you with me. All Very right. well done, Doctor. Thank you for the reassurance. All right. So, that was something, huh? So, it looks like we have a serious boss stage here, and indeed, a very serious level increase. So, I'm starting to think that our squad's a little bit underleveled. <laughs> this is intentional, of course. I did that deliberately. But, again, I'm... After what we've been through before, for weeks, and after what we were here or what we were through here today, or most of the stream today, I think that I want to start moving my units on up a little bit faster. <clears throat> so, give me a moment to return to a normal, a more normal, uh, get back to sort of what I was thinking of for my general squad. Because what we had there was a pretty decent selection of operators that I think are pretty widely applicable. And moreover, ones that I wanted to use. So yes. So Myrtle is fine. We can continue using her. She's quite useful. Astesia I like. <laughs> so she's back on the squad. And let's see. Do I... I don't have Frostleaf on the squad right now. And you've got to have Frostleaf for right now. You just gotta. I'm all about the plot. Um, Frostleaf, Frostleaf. Where do we put Frostleaf? There's Frostleaf. Um, who else do we have on our squad? We've got Meteorite, Frostleaf, Jessica, Amia, Fire Whistle, Gummy, Perfumer, Onsol, Ponsiris. Hmm. Fire Whistle at your service! Yeah, okay. So I've got my usual two Vanguards, two Defenders... I don't have my usual two defenders, actually, now that I think about it. I don't know. It might be worthwhile to experiment. Oh, no, I do have two defenders when I talked about fire whistles here. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so two vanguards, two defenders, two medics. That's my usual. I've got two guards also. I've got us. I've got two snipers. None of this is necessary, me arranging my team like this, nor is it necessarily uh, optimal. But it is a thing. I don't know. I don't know why I always fall into this pattern. It just sort of is what comes intuitively to me. Part of the issue, again, <clears throat> might just be this sort of slight lack of tactical flexibility that I have. Because, yeah, last time around with the, the other big mission that we had, the, the issue, or one of the ways that we solved it, wasn't in having, you know, more... Yeah, having... Yeah. Part of the way that we solved it was by having another medic. Of course, I don't know that that's really going to be what we need for this specific mission. Nor do I think that's going to be necessarily what we need in general. But it's worth considering that, you know... It's worth thinking about, in any rate. So, Amia is a shoe in to get leveled up, because she's Amia. We're going to have her around a lot. But yes, again, there's no... You don't need to use any specific operators for any specific missions. I just like to have operators around who are sort of on theme for the mission that we're doing. For the part of the story that we're in. So that is why I've insisted on using Jessica, Meteorite, and Frostleaf as much as possible. I think I've been lamenting a lot the lack of a rapid redeploy operator, so I might see what options we have for that. I don't strictly want to use Yato, because while she's very strong, uh, she's very strong is the issue. <laughs> I don't want to use too good of units, though, again, her, you know, she's not invulnerable, certainly. Anyway, so, we've got some real MVPs on this squad. So let's 
take some time to level them up a little bit. Not all the way. Of course, we are going to give Amya some more potential. But yes, we had switched over to Spirit Burst as Amya's active. But yeah, I've been told that it gets better at Elite 2, and we haven't had... We haven't, well, I was going to say we haven't had much reason to use it. We've not had much opportunity to use it because it just takes so long to charge up and we don't often use Amya. I guess I could probably make use of casters more in general. Right, I forgot what I was coming here to do. Anyway, so we're not going to level up everyone up to 70. I don't think everyone can get up to 70 necessarily, but we are going to level our units up because, again, while I do want a challenge, I do also want to get through the game. And I'm willing to concede on this point in the name of making the playthrough a little bit smoother. But yes, we're going to have other opportunities for a challenge later. I see. Thank you, Doctor. No problem. I've so much from you. I'm glad you appreciate my insights. But yes, Amia has been leveled up. Myrtle will be leveled up. Again, I understand that she is pretty useful in general. I don't have a strong connection to her specifically as a unit. Which honestly, I don't know. This is my playthrough. You know, I don't need to be beholden to anyone else's opinions. I could use a different, uh, a different Vanguard if I wanted to. I don't have another Vanguard in mind that I would want to use. Um, so really it goes both, it goes both ways, I suppose. I don't know. I don't need to be so choosy, I suppose. We have plenty of resources with which to level up our units and even to promote them once we have more opportunities to do that. But yeah, so it's not like I'm at all short of, you know, opportunities here. It's just that, you know, I don't want to have too many units that are too good is the issue. Again, I sort of talked about that a little bit with Yato. I don't have too many units that are too good because I want to still have a challenge. But again, even beyond just level, there are more challenges as well. Hmm. Finding the structural support core in an instant and destroying it right away. All yes. Right. With a little practice, I'm sure I can do this too. Ponsiris is absolutely our MVP, most valuable Ponsiris. But yeah, I've definitely, I started using her because I, I just sort of liked her, liked her vibe more or less. I liked her story a little bit. I liked the, the notion of her as a character. And she's really been putting in the work. Ponsiris is absolutely one of the most impactful units we have deployed in the entire game so far. But yes, as for our medics, but yeah, Perfumer has been kind of underperforming a little bit. Which is unfortunate because she's like, I think she's at the max level she can be without being promoted, that is true. So I, I wonder a little bit. I don't know. I guess I'm just not Medics are a unit that I don't think about very much. So I really don't know. Yeah, medics are just a unit that I don't think about very much, so I don't really know that much about how to use them effectively, what types of medics are useful in different situations. I definitely do believe in Perfumer. I think she's a good choice, but I don't know that she's the best choice for our sort of default multi-target medic. That being said, I don't know what other multi-target medics we have. Um, just in terms of what ones I have, like, around. I don't have a tremendous amount of them, it looks like. But yes, I don't have a whole lot of them, and some of them might be spoiler characters. Um, but... Uh, hmm. 
Well, okay. So let's address the owl in the room. The Lopsis is a medic. This much we know. She's the medic that I have used quite a bit when I was when I play the game casually. She is basically my main medic. You know, I don't use her exclusively. I use other medics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one, in my experience, just one medic is almost never a reasonable amount of medics to have. But anyway, so, Telopsis is very good. But yes, Telopsis is, again, so good that I rely upon her a lot when I've been playing casually. Which is why I've deliberately made an effort to distance myself from her. But yeah, I don't want to use... Yeah, again, I don't know. The main thing that draws me to her is skill aura, increasing the SP recovery rate of allies. I don't know. I, th I feel like I might honestly be overvaluing that because that's basically the reason that I use her. It's almost, um, in a lot of cases, the fact that she heals at all is secondary. But yeah, I always, when I think of her, I think of skill aura. And that's not necessarily terrible. But, uh, but yeah. The other reason that I think of Telopsis over uh, Perfumer is because of her second skill, Enkephalin. So, the range expands, her range expands, and it, and it reduces the attack interval slightly. I don't have the numbers on hand. I think I did back when we did Telopsis's uh, Operator Overview, Operator Spotlight as I call them sometimes, correctly, when I'm talking. Um, anyway. So, Enkephalin ra radically, radically decreases the interval of her attacks, which is to say her healing, so that it becomes, like, she heals really fast, really, really fast. Yeah, I'm gonna actually pull up the numbers here, because I feel like it's worth, worth it to know. I usually don't like to look up things midstream, but... We're already in a little bit of downtime, a little bit of admin time, if you will. That's it. But yes. So. But yes. So at, what what is it, level 3. So at level 3, it reduces the attack interval by 1.65 seconds. Uh, and her base attack interval is 2.85. So let's bust out the calculator again. Well, I don't know. It's... A, not that challenging of math. Um, anyway. I don't I don't think it's going to be that exciting to see. Anyway, so what was the number again? 1.65? Okay. So yeah, so it's more than halves the rate, or the, more than halves the interval between her heals. Yeah, it also, I believe, increases the, her t like her healing animation changes, which I think probably has a lot to do with it. Because again, attack, you know, attack interval and all that is a factor, but also, you know, factors are like the animation itself, how long that takes and all that. Um, but yeah, anyway, so essentially my thought here is that Telopsis is probably better for if we're ever in a situation where we need a lot of healing, like fast. Sam. <clears throat> Yeah, Telopsis is, is good for if we're ever in a situation where we need a lot of healing fast with Enkephalin. And with Skill Aura, she just makes most of the other units on our team just significantly better. And there's definitely... I don't know. Using her makes things better in a way that other medics don't necessarily. Because again, she has more utility than just the healing. So she's a very, very appealing option to me on that ground. But again, I don't necessarily want to use her be specifically because she is just such an overwhelmingly obvious sort of correct choice in my mind. So I think honestly, for the time being, we're not going to have Telopsis be a major player on the team. I might swap her in every now and then if I just need to make things go a little bit faster. 
again, I don't like the idea of, like, just switching an operator to... Well, no. Switching operators is good. That's why you have so many of them. Like, that is good tactics. Like, I don't need to be... I don't need to limit myself on that for any any reason. But yes, I don't... Yeah. My hesitation is not on switching operators around. We've done that quite a bit. We've done that today, in fact, without hesitation. The issue is I don't want to switch to just, like, quote, better operators, end quote. Yeah, I don't want to use just operators that I think would be generally better. I want to, if I'm switching operators around, I want to switch to one that I think is more applicable in this specific situation. There are definitely operators that are better than others. I'm not going to deny that. But I think part of what makes this game good is the fact that you don't necessarily just need to have better operators to overcome problems. Like, again, we didn't have, like, any great operators on that last mission, except for uh, Pon Cyrus, who is the best ever, and will always be so. Um, uh, I can't wait until we uh, can upgrade Pon Cyrus some more. I'm very happy that she's here. Telopsis would make Pon Cyrus even better, because she'd be able to make use her skills faster. Anyway. Anyway. So... The other options in my mind... Pardon me one second. Eh, no, never mind. Okay, anyway. The other options in my mind are... Yeah, I don't know. I might need to do some more thinking about this off-stream. We are getting close to time here. Hmm, no, we'll keep going through this. I want to... I want to have a record of my thoughts, to be honest. That's a big part of it. But yes, so anyway. So, thoughts on medics. Onsoul or Hibiscus are fine. If we're not trying to heal multiple targets at once, I think Hibiscus is better. Oh no, actually, she does have... Hmm. Hibiscus does actually have less attack than Onsoul. Granted, her healing up skill does have a better impact. So, when she's good, she's better. But she's not necessarily... When she doesn't have that up, Onsoul is actually a better choice. Here again, we go into the better operators thing that I wanted to avoid. Um, they're very similar, to be honest. I do think that, that it's a little bit situational. Because again, Hibiscus is significantly better when uh, you need to get just like a good amount of healing pretty quickly, whereas Onsoul just has more reliable healing and is able to potentially heal more units. So Onsoul's better for general use, Hibiscus is maybe better for emergencies. At any rate, neither of them need to be leveled up, so we don't need to think about it too much. Meteorite. Meteorite's just kind of on the team because she's on the team, so... It's almost a given, to be honest. Frostleaf, I like. I like the character of Frostleaf. We've talked about this before. So she's a kind of a shoe in to be honest, for uh, additional leveling. So let's let's make the easy decisions first, and then maybe we'll have uh, refined our decision-making abilities for the more difficult ones. Thanks. No problem. All right, one second. Hold on. I'm going to have to deal with this. Be right back. Frostleaf. Uh, yeah, we like Frostleaf. Full stop. <laughs> Asthesia... 
has been kind of hit or miss. We haven't been facing enough high defense enemies to really justify her specifically. She's cool and I like her, but I think we need more like damage damage. Honestly, we've been having a lot of issue with just enemies like being strong and like killing things. So I just want to kill things faster. Again, Aesthesia is not bad for that, but I think there are probably better options. What those would be is uh, unknown to me at this point, but you know, they exist, I'm sure. Um, yeah, well, what, what would we want to go for for another guard? I usually try to think of, or I usually, <clears throat> I guess I don't try to, but I end up thinking of different classes in terms of like, they have a, you know, sort of normal subclass, and then they have sort of other classes that diverge from that in some way. And I tend to gravitate towards whatever I consider to be the normal version of that class. But I guess that's not really necessary. Um, honestly, I think now I want to prioritize an operator who I feel like didn't get a fair shake the last time we used them. But yeah, Estelle, I think... I don't know. So, Estelle has some benefits to her. For one thing, she has a cool, interesting skill in Sacrificial Strike. But yeah, she has a interesting ability in that when she defeats enemies, she gets healing. Or I guess she doesn't have to defeat them as long as they are near her. But yeah, Estelle gets healing, which is cool. I guess, okay. Part of the issue I'm realizing now is that I'm sort of thinking of this as, as though I'm trying to create a specific team of exactly 12 operators that are going to carry me through the rest of the game. That is not true. <laughs> We're going to switch out, you know, probably at least three operators, maybe more, maybe less, depending on circumstances, to, you know, accommodate for building a team that, you know, has to do with the story at hand. I've already established this. But yeah, again, I was sort of thinking like, oh, you know, this operator is more useful, you know, in niche situations, but this one's generally useful, so I don't know which one to use. Use both. Use one for general situations and use one for niche situations. It's simple. But yeah, again, a tendency of mine in this game and in general is to try and find a solution. Try and find a single solution that simply works and simply apply that to all problems. But yeah, so, you know, we've seen that in missions where I tend to just place all of my units in a single, you know, a single spot or two spots or whatnot. Place them all in a very specific formation and then just sort of hope that formation holds. Not making substitutions as conditions change, not making any additional, you know, alterations to anything. Just putting everyone in their spots and hoping for the best. That has not worked very well in a lot of cases, and adherence to that has led to, you know, a lot of very stagnant strategies. And so I want to move away from that. I want to, I guess, make a... yeah. Rather than just having a different set of operators that I try to achieve a very specific uh, organization or a very specific structure with, again, it would probably be best if I have a group of operators that I can sort of rotate in and out as I see fit. So, you know, I have some operators that are good for specific circumstances. Estelle is good for if we're fighting lots of enemies, because she can hit more than one at a time. She's not great, uh, just, you know, she's not as good in more general situations where enemies can be taken out a little bit more, a little bit slower, you know. So anyway, so now that I'm now that I've realized that I'm thinking about this wrong, that I shouldn't just create a team of 12 operators, especially since, you know, Meteorite, Jessica and Frostleaf are probably going to, well, I don't know, we're going to be sticking around in this area for a little bit, I think. I don't have any reason to believe that we're going to immediately leave Chernabog, but, but yeah. 
So, Frostleaf, Jessica, and Meteorite are probably still justifiable on my team as story-based additions. Again? Okay. So, my thoughts. I want to have flexibility. That is something that I specifically was looking for. Having had time to think about it now, I'm realizing that when I was thinking earlier about, oh, I want to do things different, rather than thinking, rather than aiming for the ability to do multiple things, I was just thinking of going from doing one thing to doing a different thing. Which is not flexibility, it's just being different, you know? Because if I try to solve all of my problems with a hammer, and then I feel like, oh, this hammer is boring to me, I'm going to pick a new tool, and I just, like, pick a wrench and try to solve all my problems with the wrench. Fundamentally, the underlying issue of the lack of flexibility is the same. It's just that, you know, a wrench is maybe better for some tasks and less applicable for others than a hammer. So, yes. So, again, rather than picking a different tool, I need to acquire a toolbox and put into it different tools that I can swap out for different jobs. Because again, it takes me a while. It takes me a while before I think, okay, this is a situation that definitely needs different operators. And I think that if I were to switch operators more readily, then we probably wouldn't run into these issues where we just like get stuck on a stage for an extended period of time. Because again, once we switched operators around a little bit and were and once I was willing to sort of make do with a suboptimal situation there on the uh, once units on the right hand side started getting defeated. Once that happened, we were able to start we were well, I say start making progress. We we finished the stage. <laughs> we beat the stage like when we weren't able to do that at all. And not only did we beat it, we beat it perfectly. Whereas before we couldn't get through to the end at all. So, on that note, I think it's probably pretty clear that the mentality that I've been using to yeah, the mentality that I've been approaching the notion of strategy on the whole with has been flawed, and I need to address that. And in the negative one minutes I have before stream is scheduled to be over, uh, I probably don't have time to think about that. So, instead, let's wrap up, and I can think about this uh, in the intervening time. So, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening while I uh, have a minor existential crisis over Arknights, I suppose. Let's wrap things up. So, if anyone has any raid suggestions, as always, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, I can, as always, find a target myself. Let's see who's online. I guess while I'm thinking about it, or well, before I forget, rather, um, yes. So, the night has been Arc Nights. Again, most likely we will be streaming again on Saturday, uh, because I don't, <clears throat> I don't know, I don't want to have to get everything set up for streaming in an entirely different building. Again, my setup is not so specific, nor is it as so dependent on like specific physical objects to make that like terribly impractical but it's still more stress than I would like to uh, put on myself but yes I don't want to have to get all that stuff sort of reset up when I can just delay by a day and be fine so Saturday 8.30pm central time is when we're expecting the next stream and but yes what with the lack of suggestions i think tonight we're going to go and drop by uh oh okay never mind bum, 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 bum. 
All right. So. Okay. Yeah, the target that I was uh, planning on raiding just went offline. So. Let's find another target here. I guess I'll refresh my page. I don't know if they went, like, just went offline, but they weren't off for yet. They weren't offline when I look at my Twitch page, um, if nothing else. Uh, okay. Let's go see. It's just a goblin. I don't believe I... I don't... No, actually, no. Now that I think about it, I have rated It's Just a Goblin before. But yes. Yeah, is playing some pseudo regalia, which I think that is sort of a. It's a game. <laughs> I don't know enough about it to say anything beyond the fact that it's a game, but it is indeed a game, as far as I'm aware. So. Whoops. Oh dear. Flash raid, it's just a goblin. It's just a goblin, is indeed a goblin, VTuber. Yes. Oh, did I... I typed it wrong, apparently. Oh dear. Ah. I see my problem. Okay, anyway. Raid. It's just a goblin. There we are. So, the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. I think last time I typed we have have arrived or something like that. We have arrived arrived, maybe. So, uh... <laughs> Oops. I suppose it's not a huge, huge deal either way. So. Uh, yeah, I guess I shared all the thoughts that I need to, and all the thoughts that were in my, my head. So. Thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much, and farewell. Let us get this raid underway.